Hello everyone, and today I am going to do a little preview of the Packer Viking game on Sunday. Get out a little earlier earlier this week. Words are hard sometimes. But uh through one game, we go through the stats of the one game, obviously it's a very small sample size, so you know, it's not necessarily set in stone. You know, sometimes teams are, you know, pretty good through the first three or four weeks at something, then by the end of the year, there's problems, whether it be injuries or it just falls off. Things like that happen all the time. So for both sides, both teams here, I would take things with a grain of salt as it's only one game. As of right now, the Packers are 10th in total offense with 370 yards last week, and they are 7th in passing yards, 301 to be exact. They were 25th in sacks allowed, though, with four. 28th in rushing offense with only 69 yards, 24th in yards per carry at 3.8, and they were 15th in third down conversions at 38%. Now, they were 6th in total defense last week, and this is usually where they struggle, but like I said, 6th in total defense with only allowing 294 yards, they were 7th in passing yards, allow 155, and they were 5th in sacks, which is 4th. They were 24th in rushing yards allowed, 139, 29th in yards per carry allowed at 5.1. And they were 20th in 3rd down conversions allowed there at 41% of the time the Bears were converting. And injury report stuff, Devontae Adams showed up today. With a shoulder injury, he was limited. Oren, Oren Burks, Oren Burks, he's a linebacker. Shoulder injury, also limited. Uh, Josh Jones did not participate with an ankle. And Aaron Rodgers obviously didn't practice with the knee. He's been all over the news, I think, if you've been paying attention to NFL news lately. A lot of uh, Rodgers, will he play talk. And we will get into that a little bit later. And they were Minnesota, on the other hand, last week, 16th in total offense at 343, 17th in passing yards at 227, 20th in sacks allowed at 3, 14th in rushing yards, 116 rushing yards gotten for them last week. And they were only 26th in yards per carry at 3.6. Uh, 12th and 3rd down conversions at 41%. Now, defensively, usually where the team shines, uh, 12th in total yards allowed last week at 327. 15th in passing yards last week, 237. 9th in sacks, sacks gotten at 4. They were 8th in rushing yards allowed, allowing only 90. And 6th in yards per carry allowed at 3.6. And they were 17th and 3rd down conversions allowed at 38%. A lot of the numbers defensively as of right now are down from last year. But as I said, things could change. And, you know, Packers being 10th in offense, if, as long as Rodgers can stay on the field, that's probably going to go up as well. So that is what it is. And injury report stuff for Minnesota. Rock Thomas, running back, he kind of... He might even be inactive because, you know, you probably can't have, you know, four running backs. Well, I guess five running backs on uh, the active game day roster. And he, but he was a full participant with an ankle. Mackenzie Alexander, full participant with an ankle. And Trey Wayne was also a full participant with a knee. Now, Everson Griffin showed up today on the injury report, limited today in practice with a toe injury. And obviously, Pat Elfline was also limited. Now, I'm going to go over some of the guys I expect to play and the ones I don't. I don't expect Pat Elfline to play, and I do expect Everson to go. I expect Rodgers to go. Not sure about Josh Jones. I would imagine that he doesn't as of right now, unless something changes. But... Still kind of 50-50 on that one. and But I really do anticipate Aaron Rodgers playing. And I don't think him being less mobile necessarily changes all the game plans. B 
because the only thing we always talk about going into these Green Bay games is we need to keep him inside the pocket, make him beat us from within the pocket. It just makes it a lot easier because if he's hobbled at all, really, because no matter what, he's not going to be 100% going into this game. They're talking about a knee sprain. Now, they aren't saying what grade it is, but a knee sprain usually means kind of a risk of tearing, you know, one of those ligaments in there, whether it be the ACL, the MCL, the LCL, the PCL, any of those three-letter ligaments. Uh, <laughs> so, him being out there might make him a big risk. I know some people are saying that, that no, just live to fight another day, but at the same time, this is your home game, and, you know... With the one game Rodgers was healthy in to play at U.S. Bank, he, he didn't win. And I'm not considering last year's because he got injured in the first quarter. I, I'm not necessarily going to count that one against Aaron. But, yeah. Anyway, I don't think it really changes the game plan. It just makes it easier to contain him, and we might be able to... I don't know, like, you might be able to be a little bit more aggressive rushing him, but I would still play some contain because he will still try to get outside the pocket and make those bigger plays that he's known for doing. I imagine that he'll at least try a few times. So I wouldn't completely throw it out the window that he can't do it because we've we've seen it before with this man. And I do think what they will end up doing is... A lot of quick passing that you kind of saw in the second half of last week's game against Chicago. And what that will end up doing is just you need to drop back as many people as possible and you really need to get home with a four-man rush. Now, luckily for the Vikings case, your four-man rush consists of Griffin, Richardson, Hunter, and Linval, and some nice rotational pieces in Jaleel Johnson, Jalen Holmes, some David Perry... Stephen Weatherly, Deshaun Bauer. You don't have bad backups necessarily. And you're going up against the line that allowed four sacks last week, albeit to a, a very underrated Chicago defense. Okay. So just getting home with four is very key, and dropping back eight is likely. And I think they're going to try to beat, you, beat us with a lot of a slants, and pretty much out routes. I think out routes are another thing, especially with Trey Waynes. With, he has good top end speed. It's just more of the lateral stuff he's not so great with. And you might see some Mike Hughes on the outside because of that, if those start to become a problem. Now, offensively, we really need to get the run game going this week. And I was shocked to see the numbers as bad as they were for Chicago last week a little bit, considering you have Kenny Clark, Mike Daniels, Amaham, and Wilkerson over there. Those are very, those are three very, very talented players. But if you can hit the edge, their linebackers can be had a little bit. And if you can get Dalvin Cook in space, that's always the best place to get him. And especially against a defense that we saw last week struggle with tackling at the second and third levels. It's just more of if you can get past that front three and that three, four they play, it's, it's, and with our line, not usually the best matchup here. So I'm thinking you probably need to stress the edges more, which might end up being more of the left side because Rashad Hill, not the best run blocker in the business. He's more known as a pass blocker, and so yeah, you're probably going to see a lot of left side, which I believe means Mike Daniels most of the time, which also isn't a favorable matchup, because you're talking about him and Tom Compton, and I'm not that big on Tom Compton, but you really need to figure out a way to get the running game going a little bit more than you did last week. Like, I know the number says, oh, you had 116 rushing yards, but yeah, but 3.6 yards per carry isn't always going to get that done. You you need, I, I'm a strict believer in getting four in order to have an effective running game. I don't think it was too effective last week. I thought Dalvin did well because he still had total yards. It was just the 
the fumble and the lack of running space, really. And I, the other thing that might be key offensively is Diggs and Thielen against a inexperienced secondary, for the most part, when you're talking about, uh, you know, Jair Alexander and Josh Jackson, you might see two savvy, more, more, or more savvy route runners anyway, in Thielen and Diggs, kind of take advantage of these rookie corners a little bit. And I know, like, the only real threat Chicago had was Allen Robinson. You have two here, and Kyle Rudolph in the middle, who I'm really not that big on, but in the red zone, he's okay. I like him in the red zone, but everywhere else, not the best. But like I said, if you can still get the backs involved and Diggs and Thielen on those corners, most of the time you should have some decent success, assuming we can block Mike Daniels, Kenny Clark, <laughs> and Muhammad Wilkerson. And one last thing. I don't think I even touched on last week, which is my bad. Uh, Cousins needs to do better in the fourth quarter because last week he went 0 for 7 in the fourth quarter. He cannot go cold in the fourth quarter, especially if Aaron Rodgers is playing because Aaron Rodgers will... He has those moments where you just know he's going to come back. Like last week, when I saw him walk back onto the field, I was like, Green Bay's winning this game. Like you just... He has that feel to it. So you can't go cold in the fourth quarter and expect to win the game here. Especially in Lambeau, you can't expect to win the game by not completing a pass in the fourth quarter. And I'm really hoping that was more of a situational thing, not necessarily a thing. This is a Kirk Cousins thing. Because, I mean, I, statistically, this is the worst he's ever done. I imagined I mean, he didn't even complete a ball. So I... I'm kind of thinking this is kind of an outlier, but you still need to do better than that, Kirky boy. Uh, but yeah, my prediction here, even with Rodgers, I think the hobbleness to his knee there will uh, affect him. And these those big plays that we're accustomed to getting from him, he might have to you know eat some more sacks because he can't run out of the pocket and you know do the Aaron Rodgers things that we've all accustomed to see him doing. I got, I'm not sure he will be able to do all of them, and we might be able to actually get home with our four-man rush, considering who we have. And so I have us winning the game 27-24, and it's not a confident three-point lead there. So that is what it is, and until next time, I bid y'all adieu.